Hello everyone, it's time for Good Week Israel, where we will give you ILTV's latest positive highlights. So get ready to smile, because coming up, actual physical evidence that may corroborate the biblical stories found in the book of Judges. Then in a historic first of its kind address, Yamina and K. Shirley Pinto hitting the Knesset with hard truths during an all sign language speech. And the Israel Antiquities Authority in Jerusalem unveiling a monumental new discovery. An exceptionally rare glimpse into ancient history, a shard from a clay vessel that may have belonged to the famous Gideon of the biblical book of Judges. For the first time ever, Israeli archaeological experts are revealing an inscription that both refers to the biblical book of Judges and dates back to that same time. In fact, the artifact in question may have even belonged to the famous judge Gideon, a.k.a. Yerubal. A shard from a ceramic jug inscribed with the name Yerubal was discovered at the Kirbat Erai site in the Shahariya forest of the KKL JNF. And the shard, dating back to around 1100 BCE, or over 3100 years ago, perfectly aligns with the First Iron Age, as well as the time of Judges, as described in the Bible. In addition, this is the first time in history that the name Yerubal has been found outside of the Bible and in an archaeological context. Of course, when working with artifacts of this age, nearly everything is an educated guess. And the geographical context in which the shard was discovered lends credence to the theory of coincidence. Professors Garfinkel and Ganor explaining that the name Yerubal was evidently in common usage at the time. And so while the owner may have been the very same Gideon as mentioned in the Bible, this inscription may just as easily be referring to another Yerubal. The judge Gideon is first mentioned in the Bible as fighting against idolatry, and he's most often remembered for his triumph against the Midianites. Next, a Barilan University archaeological survey that has just found a small but incredible discovery. Two coins that date back some 2,000 years discovered in the Binyamin region of the West Bank, and they show evidence of early Jewish life here in Israel. The coins reportedly originating from the period of Jewish rebellion against the Romans, with one dating back to the time of the Second Temple and featuring the Hebrew inscription, Freedom for Zion, on one side. Meanwhile, the other coin, dating back to the Bar Kokhba revolt, circa 132 to 136 in the Common Era, and it's likewise featuring a palm branch surrounded by a wreath right beside an inscription reading Freedom to Jerusalem on one side. Most importantly, though, these finds are defying previously held, held beliefs that the Jewish settlements north of Jerusalem were all destroyed during the Great Rebellion, with Dr. Dvir Raviv, the leader of Barilan survey, saying that the coins indicate the presence of Jewish populations in the area at least until the end of the Bar Kokhba revolt. Moving on, another incredible archaeological discovery in the old city of Jerusalem, and curiously, the find actually settling a long-held debate. I'll leave Hannah Rifkin with the details. Excavators with the Israel Antiquities Authority confirming that they've uncovered the eastern section of Jerusalem's outer walls. The previously thought missing section connecting to the other sections of the wall discovered decades ago, and proving beyond a doubt that the capital of Judea's perimeter was indeed protected by a single massive fortification. A fortification that met its end nearly 2,607 years ago today. The Babylonians arrive here in 586 BC and destroy the city of Jerusalem and the first temple. Remains of this destruction were uncovered here in recent excavations of a building just inside the wall. However, they did not destroy this segment of the wall, which remains standing till today. Meanwhile, other discoveries include a bully inscribed with the name Tzafan, a Babylonian stamp seal, and so much more. We found a number of storage jar handles which were stamped either with lamelech belonging to the king stamp or with concentric circles or with rosettas. These teach us about Judean bureaucracy, administration from some time in the 8th century BC until the Babylonian destruction. The findings in full will be presented by the IAA this October at the Conference for New Studies in Archaeology of Jerusalem and its region. And now this. 
It is a great honor and privilege to stand here before you to officially open the Embassy of the United Arab Emirates in Tel Aviv. Situated in the heart of the Tel Aviv Stock Exchange building, the UAE officially becoming the first Arab Gulf state to open an embassy in Israel, and its envoy hailing the bright future that lay in store with the further actualizations of the Abraham Peace Accords. Deals already in the works between the two nations in the fields of economy, air travel, technology, culture, and more. And Israeli officials, for their part, likewise beaming with pride as peace spreads across the region. The nations of Sudan, Bahrain, and Morocco, among others, similarly warming with Israel. Now a seriously bittersweet moment in the Knesset. Deaf Knesset member from the Yamina party, Shirley Pinto, delivering a historic and powerful speech. But in it, Pinto outlining the long road ahead towards creating an actually fully accessible society. For the first time in Israeli history, the country's first ever deaf Knesset member, Shirley Pinto, delivering her opening speech to the plenum through Hebrew Sign Language and her interpreter, Liat Pecho. Pinto is the first ever deaf MK, having been bumped up into parliament thanks to the so-called Norwegian law, which allows acting government ministers to give up their Knesset seats for the next party member on their lists. Pinto, however, is by no means a supposed sympathy hire, the 32-year-old very much earning her way through her long career of activism on behalf of Israelis with disabilities. And she says that despite her pride in Israel and her deep love for the nation and its people, unfortunately, we still have a ways to go. על בשרי ועל נפשי את החוסר הנגישות, היעדר המודעות והחסמים הטבועים בחברה. הקשיים מתבטאים בדברים הבסיסיים ביותר בחיי היום-יום. בין אם מדובר באזרח עם מוגבלות שאינו מצליח להתפרנס בכבוד, כי האוטובוס הבין עירוני המגיע למקום עבודתו אינו נגיש. או אזרח חרש שהורדם לקראת תהליך רפואי פולשני, ללא הסכמתו, כי לא הבין את הרופא והצוות הרפואי לא הבין אותו, כי אין בו נמצא תרגום לשפת סימנים. אם זה תלמיד כיתה א' שמתמודד עם אפילפסיה ולא מגיע ללימודים כבר שנה שלמה, משום שבית הספר אינו מאפשר לו להיכנס לכיתה יחד עם כלב השירות שלו, והרשימה עוד ארוכה. Pinto then going on to say that since the founding of the state, Israel has failed to provide proper responses for the disabled community and has instead only succeeded in pushing them to the margins. That said, we're not without hope. Pinto calling on her fellow Knesset members to join her in the fight as soon as possible, starting with the simple awareness that there is a problem to address and ending with a total rethinking of how things are done. <laughs> כל מבנה שנבנה חייב להיות נגיש מראש לאנשים וילדים עם מוגבלות פיזית. כל שירות שניתן חייב להיות נגיש מראש למוגבלות חושית או שכלית. כל מוצר שמיוצר חייב להיות נגיש מראש לכל סוגי המוגבלויות. מוסדות ציבוריים חייבים להוות ראש חץ בנושא ובעקבותיו יבואו השאר. Finally, thanking Prime Minister Bennett, Interior Minister Ayelet Shaked, and several others for their ongoing support, Pinto signed off. But receiving her historic message with a rare showing of support, Pinto received an emotional standing ovation and the warm embrace of almost all her colleagues. Moving on, a landmark moment for family rights in Israel. The High Court of Justice announcing that all laws denying surrogacy rights from same-sex couples and single men are unconstitutional. The dramatic decision to take effect within six months' time. The Yom Histori, Lakila, Lakila Talata Bi Israel, the Yom Histori, Lakhevra Israelit Kula, Schuta Shivion, the Schut Lorut, Kiblu et Amakom Arauilaen, Ba Sugia Kritit, Shelakamat Mishpacha, Aflayat Zugot Hadminim, Veavot Yehidanim. Pinto 
יש זכות שלמה להיות הורים ולהקים משפחה בישראל באמצעות הסדר פונדקאות. In 11 year legal battle finally ending and surrogacy rights being extended to single Israeli men and Israeli same-sex couples. The fight starting in earnest in 2010 with a petition to the court by Itai Pinkas Arad and his partner Yoav Arad Pinkas. Additionally, the latest ruling follows a high court decision in February 2020, which gave the Knesset a one-year deadline to pass a new indiscriminate surrogacy law. Until now, partnering with a surrogate in Israel was an option only available to heterosexual couples and to single mothers, provided the single mom's own eggs were used in the surrogacy. In any case, though, the deadline has come and gone. So last week, the state requested that the court advance its decision ahead of September. And voila, the ban on LGBTQ or single father surrogacies now set to lift in half a year, the six-month period meant to give government offices time to adjust to the new ruling. And both the Israeli petitioners, the LGBTQ community, and the health minister, openly gay Meretz party leader Nitzan Horowitz, are applauding the decision as cleaning a stain from Israel's robust legal system. ונאבקו כנגד מה שנראה קושי בלתי עביר, כנגד כל הסיכויים. אנחנו באמת מתרגשים גם uh, בשם הקהילה uh, הגאה, אבל אני חושב שההחלטה שה, uh, הזאת והמהלך, uh, כל, כל הדרך הזאת, 12 השנים שעברו מאז שהתחלנו uh, לצעוד בה, um, הביאו היום לתוצאה שהיא מאוד חשובה, היא חשובה לא רק למי שעשויים uh, ליהנות uh, ולהביא ילדים לעולם, אלא בעיניי כל, כל מקום בספר החוקים שמפלה אותנו, מפלה אותנו אפליה שרירותית, בין אם זה הקהילה הגאה או בין אם זה כל קבוצה אחרת, זה כתם, זה כתם על ספר החוקים של מדינת ישראל, וכל יום שכתם כזה נמחה הוא יום חג למדינה, הוא יום חג לחברה שלנו. Now the Israeli cosmetics brand SR Cosmetics has just launched a new application that's combined the world of modern mobile technology and the field of cosmetics. Let's take a look at my interview with Emmanuel Kadosh, who breaks things down for us. Hey, Aaron, so it's actually a really simple idea that now that I think about it, it's crazy that no one's done it before. The new Face It app basically takes away the need to physically go into your cosmetologist's office in order to learn more about your skin and figure out the products that best suit you. You download the Face It app in the App Store, which uses an AI system, and then you take pictures of your skin clean of makeup and, of course, in good lighting, from a front and side angle, and then upload it to the app. The app then analyzes your picture and will give you kind of like a breakdown of your skin, whether you have mild acne, eczema, wrinkles, scars, pigmentations, or, you know, if you're lucky, you just have generally healthy skin. All right, well, this actually does sound like a very cool app. I, I mean, especially in the time of, of COVID when you don't, necessarily want or can physically go into your cosmet cosmetologist's office, uh, but you're still looking to learn more about your skin. So what is the, the next step? So from there, it will give you a list of SR Cosmetics products that are recommended for your skin type, whether it be a toner, a face mask, or a serum, for example. It'll give you instructions on which product to use first and when in the day it's recommended, and then you will be able to directly purchase that skincare products that you want if it's on the website directly through the app. The app is completely changing the world of skincare, allowing you to access this insane technology from the comfort of your own home with high quality products. Now, it's important to mention that the pictures that you take on the app for the technology to assess are not shared or used publicly. Privacy is so important to SR Cosmetics. All right, well, it's actually great that you mentioned that that was something that was a concern of mine, and it's good to know that these pictures will not be used, that they are kept private. Uh, again, that was, that was something that first popped into my head when we started talking about this app. Uh, but what I want to know is, if you are a cosmetologist yourself then, can you also use this app? Actually, that's a really great question. This app is meant for two different types of users. The regular person, like me, who just needs some advice on their skin and good products to use. And then there's the cosmetologist side, which are welcome to use this app as well. So if you work in the field of cosmetology, you are granted access to better priced products, more in-depth analysis of the treatments to do with specific products that they recommend. 
and you are able to save the pictures of your clients in order to see the progress that you've made with their skin. It's overall such a user-friendly app and can only benefit those that are interested in improving their skin at home. So everyone that's interested in using this revolutionary app can find it in the App Store right now under the Face It app. I already have mine downloaded. And now if you're looking for the perfect white fish recipe, look no further. The classic Panamanian dish is so simple yet so flavorful, definitely worth a try. Take a look. Hi everyone, I'd like to welcome Vera Newman. She's the author of The Marble Spoon Cookbook. Thank you you wrote the recipes, you style them, and you photograph them. That yes. is absolutely incredible. And it is a huge book and it's just stunning Thank and I'm you. so excited to cook with you. Thank you so much, I'm so excited. Okay, so Vera, you are from Panama. Yes. What a beautiful country. It's stunning there. It's I, like, I, I always say that I grew up where you vacation. And Panama has its own Jewish life and culture with so Rich, many great re restaurants and yes. flavors. And today we're going to be doing doing something very Panamanian. Yes, um, we're going to be making pescado al ajillo, which is a uh, stop. I want to say that again. Pescado al ajillo. Pescado de la ajillo. Al ajillo. Al ajillo. Yo. Yo. <laughs> I'm learning. I'm learning. Okay, pescado. I know is fish. Yes. So uh, basically, we're gonna we're we're gonna make a paste with the butter and the Dijon mustard, salt, pepper, fresh parsley, fresh garlic, and we're gonna like rub gorgeous, fresh, delicious fish. Any white fish that you find fresh that day, that's perfect to use. Today we're using baby flounder. What kind of white fish do you find in Panama? Um, oh, that's a very good question. Uh, that's why I'm here. Corvina, which is like the most commonly um, fish found like near the Panama area. And um, like literally my mom would go to like the fish market. It's as fresh as it gets. Like, I love that. From, like the fishermen fish it in the morning and then you can literally go in the afternoon I and say get ocean. fresh. Ocean to table. Yes. Okay, so okay. we're gonna start here. We have our soft and buttered. I'm gonna add some Dijon mustard. Garlic. We've garlic. got some crushed garlic. From Freshly minced garlic. I'm already garlic. smelling the garlic and the mustard and some. It's, it's really like, honestly, like I actually write in the blurb in the book that it's like very simple ingredients, but for some reason, them together is like so, so good. Mind blowing. Mind blowing. I love it's that. delicious. Some freshly cracked pepper. Was it fun writing a cookbook? So fun. I like, I honestly like, it, it's like, it's, it's like a blur. Like, I was it's very intense. It's very intense, know? but. I really enjoyed it. Okay, we're just gonna like mix this up and create like a little paste. Buttery paste. By, by Buttery the way, paste. I think that would just be really good on some bread and then toast it. Or potatoes. Oh. Literally, you just put it, oh. we mix it with potatoes and you Stop roast the them. Carrots. Yeah. Let's I actually have a potatoes. recipe in the book for garlic par parsley potatoes and it's like the same ingredients. Oh, okay, great. Yes. I'm gonna do that. I have my own copy. I have made quite a few things from the book. Papas al ajillo. Okay, I'm gonna look out for that one. Okay, so we just sprayed it, sprayed the uh, baking tray with um, some cooking spray. So I'm just gonna take the fresh fish and I'm just gonna um, arrange it on the baking sheet. Could we put parchment paper down if we want? Oh, for sure. Of... Yeah. Does it really make a big difference? You just don't want the fish to stick to the tray. For sure, yeah. Because it's actually cooked in like a higher temperature, so I feel like if you don't line it or spray it, it, it will stick and then it's not gonna come, come up nicely. nicely. Right. Okay. So we're gonna take this delicious paste we just mixed up. We're gonna take a pastry brush. Oh, a we're pastry just, brush. Uh, we're gonna just spread it on the uh, fish. So did you eat fish growing up a lot? Um, I did a lot at home. Like every every Shabbat, my mom would make Moroccan fish with fresh again fish from the market. She would just pick it up straight from the ocean. And then also every restaurant that was either dairy or uh, meat had uh, pescado al ajillo and ceviche. Ceviche. And their menu. It's very everybody eats fish in Panama. Okay, we're good. I think this okay. is perfect. Just pop it in the oven. So how long are we baking this for? Twenty minutes at four hundred. Okay, let's get in the oven. Okay. While the fish is in the oven, let's do the salad. We're gonna make a hearts of palm mango salad. Ooh. So we're gonna start with this, um, a can of the hearts of palm spaghetti. We're just gonna- I love that. 
My gosh, spaghetti have come a long way and so is Heart of Palm. I know, this is, is like great. brilliant. I don't even know how they get it done. Like, make it like stringy like that, it's amazing. Yeah, it's great, it's great. really great. Here's our mango, just it's gonna. all nicely cut up. Did you cut this yeah, up yourself? I did. Julienne. Julienne. Yes. Julienne. But, I mean, at home you can literally just use like a julienne peeler. Yeah, I love those that julienne makes, peelers, yeah, they're great. makes it okay. easier. Just gonna add some of this red onion. Scallions. I would even like throw in tomatoes. Okay, so these are the actual vegetables that go in it. So we're just gonna add here, we have um, red wine vinegar. Oh, yum. We're gonna add some of this fancy olive oil. Look at this, Tuscanini, amazing. We're gonna do freshly squeezed Lemon. Oh, it doesn't get better than this. Vinegar, lemon, olive oil. This recipe is like Panama in a salad. Like, oh. I, I can't even explain. This is what we eat in Panama. Fresh, bright, just like Delicious. lemony. Love lemon. If I had one word to describe the food experiences I had in Panama, yeah. I would just say fresh. 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 So good. You clean your hands and yes. I'm going to toss this. <gasps> this looks amazing. Now let's add some salt and pepper. Okay, fantastic. Oh. I love the fresh cracked salt and pepper. Yes. Okay. Nothing like it. Okay, that's perfect. I'll mix. Oh my gosh, how good does that look? I smell lemon. I smell hard to pop. Because my mouth pop. is watering right now. I don't know why. It looks really good. Oh. And it goes perfect with, with, with the fish that we just made, the pescado al ajillo. And I would actually serve the, this as a meal with like mashed potatoes. I think that's like, and then the mashed potatoes will catch like some of that buttery from, butter from the sauce and then the lemon from the salad. Oh. The perfect combo. You know, oh, I like to I eat. love it. Yeah, I like I, to eat when you can like mix all the flavors in a plate. It's and so I like good. everything I like on one fork with yes. a bit of that, like per, that like perfect money bite. bite. Yeah, yes, I love that. Bite. This is out of the oven. Vera, the stylist. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, put it on the plate so beautifully. Um, what you. have we got? The salad. This is the salad and the pescado. Hey, I'm going to plate it for you. Can I make you a plate, please? Oh, sure. Go okay. right ahead. Perfect. I'm so excited. Okay. And it plates so nicely. Great. I love that caramelization of that butter. Yes, it really like there's nothing like, I'm just gonna squeeze a little bit of lime for you if you don't oh, mind. Please. And some of this delicious mango and hearts of palm salad. I want a perfect bite. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the fish, a little bit of the hearts of palm salad. So good. And here we go. Mm. Amazing, right? Panama and a plate for you. Delicioso. <laughs> Vera, thank you so much for coming. Thank this is amazing. I'm so thank glad you. you're able to join us. For recipes like this and more, go to kosher.com. Oh my God, this is amazing! <laughs>